I have a friend that I kind of brought in on the call. You asked for an explanation on the global funds, <clears throat> so I figured I would go to an expert who uh, basically helped create some of that, and his history goes way back. So I kind of tracked down Dr. Todd and asked him if he would join us on the call and explain what the global funds really are because most people tie them into lawsuits and, and a lot of other things. But it's part of a plan that has been uh, brought to fruition. And I know that he's currently involved in some things going on with that, and so I figured he would be able to answer it. And Dr. Todd, can you hear me right now? Yes, go right ahead. Very good. Um, could you help us understand, we've heard so much about these global funds and um, <clears throat> and people not being able to, you know, they're part of a lawsuit and, and um, a lot of uh, things about, and, and there's a lot of half-truth and there's a lot of, you know, reality here in some other fronts, but I would really um, like some explanation as to what is this global fund that uh, people have been working on and countries have been working with. And I know those funds have been moved around between some very high-profile banks and have had a history that you're very aware of. And I'm hoping you might be able to put some clarification on what it's all about and, um, and what the expectations are. I mean, is it real? Let me ask this before you get started, though. I want to make sure this is still the global settlements and the global fund. You're talking about the same thing. And is this the lawsuit and have people been able to buy into? Are we talking about the same thing? Yeah, we are because there's been, okay. mis there's been partial misinformation and there's been other stretches or spins put on it. And so I think the real situation is we kind of have to back up and find out what the real, you know, terminology is tied in with and where it goes. And then we at least can see, you know, once you see reality, once you see a real dollar bill, you can, you know, point to the false entities out there because with history a lot of stuff has been distorted. So I think this would be a great opportunity for people to get a real understanding of what's going on, especially internationally and with currencies. So, Dr. Todd, I'll let you start just by what is a glo what is a global funds? Where did it come from, well, and is it real? The name, as I understand it, that's used most often today is global settlements. Uh, let's go back to the origin of this, and then the other key factor is uh, these funds were due to have been paid off uh, by completely paid off by 2008, according to a Treasury treaty that was set in for 50 years in 1958. Now, what was the origin of those funds that were included at that time, in other words, in 1958, and how did this come about at that time? the duration of that 50 years was decided post-World War II. The banks in Europe essentially had little that they could put in in acceptable assets that could be used uh, for the redevelopment of Europe at that time, as they were thinking. If you recall, this was set up initially in the Marshall Plan, then in the European Reconstruction Acts that came through. They were limited to just a few years, initially three years, and then certain specific extensions for uh, another just several years. Then it completely went out uh, as a having a legislative base, but the United States supported those with guarantees from the Treasury that were never, ever made public. Again, there was the origination with the reconstruction of Europe funds. Now, where did they get the funds that the banks initially used to come into this? 
the Marshall Plan itself was not developed in any way, shape, or form to take care of the Far East and the, the tremendous reconstruction that had to take place there. But there were more gold and real assets available in the Far East than were currently available in Europe at that time. So General MacArthur had the complete control of Reconstruction and virtually everything else immediately after the war and during the Korean War in the Far East. That authority wasn't relinquished until he was fired by President Truman in 1951. And that came so suddenly that his successor, General Ridgway, took over as the, uh, the U.N. Supreme, U.S. and U.N. Supreme Headquarters for the Far East in Tokyo. General MacArthur's chief of staff, General Whitney, at that time also a full general, not a five-star, uh, but he, he ranked General Ridgway uh, just slightly on what is known in the service as date of rank. Uh, of course, General Ridgway's mission and command made him the senior person, but the chief thing that they had to do there was to work out everything from an economic standpoint and a financial standpoint that General MacArthur had started. And General Whitney was given complete control of that, reporting back to General Bradley, who was at that time chief of staff, and to the president. By Treasury Treaty, we further guaranteed much of the bank operations of the top banks in Europe at that time. The person that was in control of all of this and remains in control of all of it today is Queen Elizabeth. I think that very soon she will be divesting herself of that and this will come about. How did that occur, that Queen Elizabeth got control of this? These funds were so important and meaningful internationally and would be for a number of years. They wanted a person with real longevity to have it. And initially they went to the Vatican and the Vatican fortuitously turned it down. Uh, and when they took a second look at it, they wanted somebody who was going to be have the longevity. And they felt that Queen Elizabeth and the status of Great Britain, both long-term prior to that and even then, having been saved, their treasury was down, but they felt as though that they could trust the long-term longevity of the monarchy. Therefore, her father, Queen Elizabeth's father, set up a, an, as they called it, a sacred oath that she would take this on and see it through for the 50-year period. 50 years was selected because they did not feel that the reconstruction could be done in less time than that. And we all know that it occurred very well, both in Japan, both in Europe. Uh, in roughly 20 years, they were back with a lot that had been done. So that speaks well of the people in the worst hit areas of Europe and primarily Japan. Now, because of the firing of MacArthur and the reconstruction of that, 
most of this work was not completed until about 1954 in the Far East Command that General Widgeway had at that time and General Whitney was working on. The funds base there at that time does not sound like a great deal uh, in the world today, but all of you are aware of what they call private placements now. The nomenclature of these things since World War II has taken on a number of names, as has the global settlements over those period of time. But they were looking at something in, uh, at times just above and at times just below $100 billion. And of that, the U.S. had guaranteed something in the neighborhood of uh, somewhat in excess of $20 billion. But the value of gold and where it was in getting those things together and signed over in transactions over the 50 years brought this into the many tri to several trillions of dollars. And as I said, that should have been paid out in full prior to 2008, which was the 50th anniversary of the, the 1958. It took until Hold on, I just lost the, uh, the link here. Hold on just for a second. Hopefully what you're hearing is there's a history here and the culmination is uh, where this is going to end up into just trillions of dollars that is going to be paid out here and um, some of the things that are going to be um, done with that. Okay, try, try and get them back because I want to see where um – the global settlements, because and, and guys, if you're listening, this is a very good call, especially if you're new, because Dr. Todd was part of the plan for Iraq. Now he helped put this plan together. So we're going to see how this global settlement ties into the RV and how it funds the RV, or not, because it should have already been paid. And right now I don't see the two, but before he's done. That's what I want to see. If one funds the other, if that was holding it up, because there's trillions, trillions of dollars, and how do you create that out of thin air if it wasn't? But we're going to ask him when he comes back where he sees where we're at today and who is controlling it. He was one of the ten people who put this plan together. I mean, I want to ask him right here on this call, is somebody from another country dictating this? Are they in a position to buy your dinar at this rate and why our government would let them do that? But Gary's trying to get them. But uh, I think you guys are on a great call. You just don't know it. Unless, you, I mean, you may know it. <laughs> it's a great call if we can get him back. Is he back? Hello? Oh, I thought I heard He's coming Gary's back good. in right now. Oh, okay. Dr. Todd, are you back in with us? I'm with you. There you go. Okay. We heard everything up to the trillions and uh, supposed to be paid out in 2008. And my curiosity with uh, baited anticipation okay. here is why uh, wasn't it paid uh, out? What happened? Pretty much knew where we were. Now, the question probably comes at this time, is how do I know about these things? Uh, okay. I was an air control officer just after hostilities in Korea. They had been working on this for some time, but they needed to be able to secretly move things back and forth, particularly in the Far East, to settle the final things. There was a committee set up to make the report, and I was the junior officer that 
helped write the report that went to uh, our president, Queen Elizabeth, uh, and the key person in the Far East that it went to, it's in the emperor's records themselves. Uh, I think that the point to make after that is how did these things grow and was there any litigation involving any of this? There was litigation, all of which was set aside. Uh, that doesn't mean that they didn't get certain things out of it and there weren't certain uses of it, because there were. Uh, if you recall, uh, in the later 50s, uh, there was quite a bit of contention between Taiwan and China of the earliest parts. The shelling of Matsu and Kuimoi, which were close to the... Uh, Chinese mainland. Now, this was settled out, and some of those funds it was deemed necessary because China hadn't initially had any of those funds. And things had settled down over there comparatively with the definite communist takeover of mainland China and the things under Chiang Kai-shek being on Taiwan. They needed some funds to solidify that transaction and to satisfy China. Some gold and certain other parts of this were moved around to accomplish this. Not large amounts of it, but modest amounts. That was sort of the rebirth in mainland China of some of its earliest gold holdings by the communist government. They hadn't gotten in full force of getting theirs together. That's also how they come into this today as the things were involved. Now, with this having essentially not been paid out before 2008, it was long about then that the dinar situation had come up and one of the stipulations in the settlement that General Schwarzkopf had in the ceasefire, in the tent, in the desert, had an administrative memorandum that came about a week later from Washington, because Washington was leading that coalition that substantially beat Iraq during the Kuwait War. In that administrative memorandum, it showed that in order for Iraq to regain sovereignty, it had to have in place a new currency, a new dinar. And essentially that was supposed to be, it was in writing in the administrative memorandum, it was supposed to be before Iraq could take full sovereignty. There could have been a, no time frame placed on that. This administration, the present one, apparently changed that because we all know that sovereignty went to them, roughly speaking, a year ago. Yeah, wait, wait, wait a minute. Let me interrupt you for one second real quick. Because you said that was during the Kuwait-Iraq war. That that agreement yes. came. The Iraq yes. war came years later, though. No, no. And that's when Iraq, said. Iraq attacked Kuwait. That, I think it was in nineteen ninety. Yep. And Desert Storm or Desert Shield. Yeah. I've forgotten the uh, the code name for it. I think it was Desert Storm. Mm -hmm. But that's the and from that time on. The U.S. and the Allied forces that were there uh, had were given clear control of the skies, and that is part of what led to the uh, 
the Iraq War itself, not the uh, not the Kuwait Iraq War. Okay, yeah, I want you to separate the two because it's two. Okay, yes, but this went back to them regaining sovereignty. Went back to the first of the Iraqi wars, and that was the Kuwait kicking them out of Kuwait is what it amounted to. So at that time, rather than go ahead and make the payments in the, that should have been coming, uh, I would have said at least from 2004, when this was set, uh, when all of these things were set up in 1954, but they extended that time uh, to 2008, based on 50 years after the U.S. Treasury Treaty. So that's what gave the origin, and that 50 years was a building of the banks in primarily the Far East. Now, uh, excuse me, primarily in Europe. Then the active bank in the Far East that was handling that was Mitsubishi Bank. That is where part of the funds that still have to be paid out now as what are designated as the global settlements. Part of it's there, and the rest of it is controlled in London by the Royal Bank of Scotland because that's the Queen had initially set it earlier on in Barclays, but about five years ago she moved that responsibility to the Royal Bank of Scotland. Now, most of the key banks in Europe will be taking care of their part of the settlement, but the Queen has not yet designated, but in all probability it will move through the Royal Bank of Scotland because that's the bank that she controls. And the Bank of England, being the central bank of the UK, does not want to do it. They want a key commercial bank in the UK to do it. So that's where these things are going to come out from. The important thing as far as I'm concerned, and this is a rather, subst- uh, well, l- let me go back just a minute. Every one of the presidents, this didn't, uh, wasn't fully done until Ike was president after he had taken over from Harry Truman. That's when it was, was signed and most of the things went through. He came in uh and I came in in 53 after the election of 52. Now, all of the presidents since then have been aware of this and have let it remain essentially where it was. But when Bush one went to China uh, as the ambassador, Uh, There were some arrangements made to have them having a greater participation, and that's followed through until the present time. Now, nobody, uh, there are both public sector groups, governments and such that will be paid out, and there are private sector groups that will be paid out, because that's where the original gold and other assets came from, not just governments, but private sector also. Some of that private sector was in the Far East, and some of it was in Europe, and some was in the U.S. So, but it was guaranteed up to, as I said, about $20 billion, a bit over that, by the U.S. So the U.S. will be getting one of the larger amounts out of those global settlements. Now, they've had some other names, the uh, the Patriot Package, I think it was, or some Prosperity name similar one. to that. And there were some others used in Europe that related in name uh, to the European construction. But all of it was aggregated, and the person who took the responsibility for it was the Queen. All of this has been kept quiet all of you that are involved in this i don't think any of you have seen in the major media or in all of the financial papers most of them that are authentic and i'm speaking like wall street journal and 
uh, The Economist out of the UK and uh, a few of the others, little or nothing has been mentioned in these, and I would say citizens in the U.S. and worldwide, the vast majority of them know little or nothing about this. But that's the way that it came up, and most of the legal uh, suits that came up have been knocked down or held uh, until the World Court, The Hague, makes determinations, if necessary, later as they are paid out. Okay, let me ask you this, then, because we're right there, and I'm going to ask you two other things. Can you... I mean, people can literally buy into that lawsuit. People who had nothing to do with it, weren't even around 50 years ago, can put their money in and get a portion of that lawsuit. I can't tell you how it's going to come out. (laughs) No, Tony, what there is, um, and let me jump in here. I don't think there are no major lawsuits that are considered active who haven't put been laid aside uh, to be adjudicated at a later time later if, in so. fact, they aren't dismissed entirely. And the, th- the thinking is that the vast majority of them will be dismissed simply because the aggregate funds is built to the extent that they feel as though everybody's going to be satisfied. Yeah. And, and I think what Tony's referring to, Dr. Uh, Todd, is that there are some people who have made claims that they put invested in helping uh, some of those private groups that uh, put money in years ago uh, be able to uh, clarify their ownership, and they were supposed to be benefactors of some of those private groups when you referred to where did some of the assets come from and those private well, groups. let's look and some specifics that I'm aware of. Yes, there have been actions like that. One of the biggest ones, uh, and this involved Major Bank, and it involved the misidentification and on the part of the bank, the turning down of claims. And this was UBS who handled a lot of the gold that moved out of the Far East through their bank. And They have disavowed most of this. They had also earlier disavowed the fact that uh, they had been involved with Nazi Germany in taking the goal uh, from uh, many of the people who were uh, involved, either families or other ways that they got it from many of those who were uh, exterminated in the concentration camps. And and those families have gotten back. And my understanding Many is of the families in the Far East, certain codes were given, and certain uh, persons were nominated if the elders died. And UBS was one of the most famous banks for saying that the names and the codes weren't correct, and they have turned that down. There's been a, a lot of litigation that has gone on and is still going on on that, but it hasn't hurt the funds. They haven't identified the funds uh, with the global funds, but they are identified back to the specific bank that handled them. them. Okay, let's go to this then. Um, There is global settlement, so maybe... Some people are going to get paid out of that. Maybe not. I mean, we don't know because it's ongoing litigation. Don't know. I, I see what Gary's saying. Some private person says, hey, you guys can buy into my lawsuit. Go ahead and get paid. But where does this go as far as global settlements are funding the Iraq RV? Well, what? Ha- how the t- your, your question is how did the two get related? Well, many of the banks that are holding the funds that were due for global settlements, which were released some time ago, have not yet been paid, although preparations are being made right now uh, to complete at least parts of that. 
but why did it get hung up in 2008? That's four years ago and didn't get clarified. It was not, it's pretty simple, really. When you have a multiplier of dollars uh, of 5, 10, or even more, or the equivalent, uh, or the same increase, even though whether they're going to use pound sterling as backing it or something else, those ratios have been worked out so that relating it to dollars, it will be from 5 to more than 10. And the banks knew that. And the banks are going to sit on it until they have their difference on that. And in most cases, theirs will be more than 10. With a multiplier of 10, there, there isn't a bank board worldwide that won't take that. And that's why the hold up. Okay. <clears throat> so, they should have been paid in 2008. And I already on the global know, settlements. The global on the global settlements. settlements. No. Some people think they're being paid today or yesterday. And I heard something from the World Bank about that. But now, you're, okay, you were part of the Iraqi plan, right? Or I guess I should have said. I should have said. You were involved with Iraq <laughs> as an economist and uh, helping an understanding of the asset base there and everything else back you know, in it's, the uh, It's ironic. 80s. When when I went into the Air Force in uh, uh, just after the Korean War started in 1950, uh, I was graduating from the University of Maryland, and one of my closest professors was to become the agricultural attaché to Iraq at that time. And I was selected to be his assistant, got some of the training, and when it came down to what my final job was going to be, it also, I was to be a, an agent for the CIA, and I said, under no circumstance will I accept it under those conditions. So, yes, I've, <laughs> I have followed Iraq a good bit since that time. And it, it's ironic that, that the two eventually tied together with me now in my mid eighties. So Right. So going into the plan I know both not sides from, of it pretty well. All right. Not from the first war. And even though most people don't know that it was a continuation, you try and tell people that because it wasn't completed and that's why we were in the second war. And actually I think you mentioned that on a call a year ago or two years ago, the real purpose of going back in there. But when the reevaluation was put in place when they think to go in and redo the currency, did it have anything to do with the global settlements at that time? No. They were completely okay. separate. The only right. reason for them being together was that the banks insisted that they get their money out of it through the markup. Through the markup. So can they pay them the global settlements before the RV? Or is it through the markup of the RV that the global settlements the is going to be paid? The banks wanted the increase in dollars based on the new Iraqi dinar, which, as I said, will end up being a, a markup from, uh, I mean, it was, what, about 3.5 when their international currency uh, was no longer recognized. And it's estimated now that it will be someplace plus or minus five for the individuals or in what they're calling the the third level of the payouts, the banks and countries or, uh, and certain groups related to banks are in sections levels one and two. Okay. So they're and people based are on the what would be paid to the individuals with modest amounts. Because they're, they're, they're getting information that, Gary wouldn't give them, even though I keep telling them, ask Gary the information. But anyway, because I, I used wasn't to mine, it. Wasn't mine to give. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that's okay, because they're, they're going to love this call. Now, here's the thing, because we're still in the catch-22, and I'm wanting you to say it. 
does the RV happen in order for them to get paid on the global settlements, or do the global settlements get paid in order for the RV to happen? Well, at the present time, the central banks have already made the arrangements with regard to the Iraqi dinar, regardless of whether it's released or not. And each of the central banks uh, essentially control or have the call on what the dinars will be to them. Now, they can release this as they want. Uh, I, I shouldn't say totally as they want, because there is a, I understand, a committee of central bank officers who met about a, a month or two ago in Beijing, and uh, Governor Shabibi was there with them, and that was essentially concluded at that time. So it seems to me that the central banks could allow a commercial bank in their country to handle what was there, what the way they want it to be done. Now, where the global settlements are coming out, the banks that are going to be paying that out are apparently satisfied with the uh, the recovery rates or whatever you want to call it that those banks have. In other words, they have their markup as they are paying out the global settlements. That may come before level three people are announced that they can come in and cash in. Yeah. Well, what about level one and two? Do they get paid before that? I... <laughs> You've heard of many, many years, if you've been in the equivalent of what they now call private placements, you know what blocked accounts are. Yep. Nothing, yep. nothing in the international portfolios, either with the ICC that I am aware of or Basel One, Two, that have been approved and Basel Three that's sort of hanging fire, nothing says that blocked accounts have to be in currencies that are complete at that time for international trade. It's whatever the traders will accept and the banks working with the traders. Yep. So it's my understanding that in most cases it has gone into private placements and is being allowed by the traders. Yep. Now what has out. come okay. out, I certainly don't know. And, and it is being held there, Tony. And the other key that we have to clarify, and, and Dr. Todd, uh, just I, I think the other thing he's driving at is there was a point where they were these uh, the, the global uh, funds and the um, IQD were basically moving forward. They're they're totally separate transactions, and they really weren't. They were impacting each other, but they weren't connected in any way. And then there was a point where there was discussion, and the banks in their desire to be able to be able to pay out needing more reserves were at a point where they were discussing using the um, money put into the banks for the disbursement to the um, prosperity or global funds. They were going to take and pay them out in tranches and use a portion of that to pay out the dinar. Was, and then, of course, my understanding was that that plan was then aborted at one point. Is that not correct? Pretty much. Oh no, we don't even know what you said. Oh no, I'm just joking. No, he does. <laughs> <laughs> As you said, no. pretty much. So in other words, they were connected at one point. So one had to be paid out when people were saying, "Hey, this one has to go first for the other one to go." Uh, they were merged together, but so much time has you know moved forward that the banks, I do not think, are going to need those packets to pay out the dinar. They've got that worked out on a separate um, program. So I don't see them as being connected at this point, or I should say I don't see them any longer being connected to each other. Wait, the no, banks have been satisfied as well, <laughs> to make yeah, a long story short. Sure. Uh, otherwise, yeah, they right. wouldn't have done it. Yeah. Okay. So the bank is already all right, they're happy. 
Now, they've been trading the dinar at the bank for how long now? I was going to say April or May, but I wanted you to say what, what you heard. I, uh, I, I would say plus or minus a year. A year. Last plus year when we heard that the back screens and that they were trading at the bank, and this is when all this was being accomplished and they were being satisfied and they were making the money that they needed to make as far as the global settlements was concerned? Is that what was going on or making a difference? Largely, that would be my guesstimate. Okay. And I say that just that way. I would guess that's the way it was. I have no no verification of that. Right. All right. Well, let's go to something that people do want to hear. I mean, that, and that's good. <laughs> what role the global settlement pay, played or do they have to get paid or – is it actually paying the RV? Because I think the RV and the the value above and beyond is actually paying the global settlements, if I understood you correctly, that agreement and that they're getting. So it's actually the RV is paying that. But since you're part of the plan, and we've had it before, the plan was to take the RV back to the what level again? The 350 or the $5 or what level? Was the plan? For I'd it. say plus or minus five to something over ten. The, so the, between five and ten dollars, the plan. Okay. The, the banks are going to be getting something over ten. You can pretty much assure yourselves of that. And when it comes down to level three and uh, the individuals that are involved there, I think theirs will be. Closer to five, but something over the three and a half. Yep. That's probably. Okay. I just want people to hear from somebody that was involved. Cause, you know, I, I think a lot of people are going to be sorry they missed this call or they're going to hear the recording. Well, I think the it was, key uh, thing is to understand that a central bank and the big money people that allow, I, I shouldn't say allow, but who, well, yes, allow. That's a good word for this. How does the U.S. get away with printing all the money that it has printed, and it's just printed? Nobody has added to our gold reserve in Fort Knox or elsewhere substantially. And certainly it hasn't backed that other currency. So. Did you say how do they get away with where we that? are today? That's all. <laughs> okay. well, what, he's, what he's saying is, is there's an accountability that comes in place at some point. And, um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Dr. Todd, I, okay. I really wait, want to thank wait, you. Wait, 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 wait. No, wait, I got I got one more big question for him first now. Hold on. Okay. Because um, I'm putting him on the spot, and he's doing good so far. Hold on. <laughs> okay, because this is what everybody wants to know, because you definitely gave him a rate to look for, and you were part of the plan, and if that doesn't calm him down, I don't know what will. Um, I'm not putting you actually on the spot, so you don't have to say – this morning, but if does this seem like a feasible time for this to happen? I'm gonna put it that way, so you can say what you want to say. Uh, I would say very much this, as I see it, the highest likelihood that most of this will come out yet this month. Remember, the real blow up in 2008. There were a lot of things prior to October of 2008. I think before the anniversary of that, which essentially means yet this month, it will take place or uh, there may be something that does come out in financial documents and other things that pushes it along. I can't tell you for certain. Okay. But it would appear well, right. to me, it would appear to me, and I have reason to believe, that some of the global settlements are going to take place within less than 10 days. Some of them may have already occurred this month. And when this becomes even somewhat known, I think that it will force the other things to move 
with some greater speed than they have in the past year. Okay, Does that well, seem wait a minute. Let me. As a statement on that, Gary. It, it does. Let me clarify. Let me ask you though, because if the global settlements payments, even the last of them, was going to take place in ten days, should the RV be before that or after that? Well, the, the essentially, the, the, <laughs> I'm not certain that the RV hasn't taken place. Unofficial. Well, I should say level three. I shouldn't say that because we've been hearing about one and two for some time. So, um, do you think level three? would take place before that a, or after. I think that there's a hard prob a high probability that it will be announced before the end of this month. Okay. And almost I can't see how it can hold past the middle of October at the latest. Yep. Okay, I didn't want to hear that part. I like the this month part. But anyway. There are just okay. too many other things that are going on right now in Europe with the Euro and with the banks there, with China, and getting the stability that is needed, I think that a lot's going to happen within 60 days, yeah. a lot of it within 30. Is, is, okay. Gary, are you saying something? No, no. somebody just walked in behind me, and uh, they, oh. I was trying to get them to close the door from all the noise with the dog behind me. Uh, doc, okay. Dr. Todd, I, I really appreciate you taking the time and the effort to, to share and clarify some okay. things. There's a lot of history here, and I appreciate there you just that. sharing no some of that. There is no question about it. I just wish that most of the – that this administration was aware of all this history. They may be, but if they are – it doesn't seem to me like they're acting appropriately, but uh, we'll find out one of these days. Thank you all. I'm going to bow out at this time, let you all finish up. Okay. All right, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, I want to say thank you. We appreciate having you. Okay, right. Take care, sir.